Good morning. And I extend a good morning to those of you who are joining us by stream. And just to let you know uh, how honored we are that you're uh, choosing to be with us this morning. So as you all know, today is the first Sunday of Lent. And uh, as it is the first Sunday of Lent, we gather together to make a different sort of meaning. And as we make a different sort of meaning, uh, we change the tone and the tune of our liturgies. And just so you're aware, because I'm sure you will come to you as, we, we, as the liturgy unfolds, uh, today you'll hear that the psalm tone is different, the gospel procession has a different tone, the trisagium, which is often used instead of the Kyrie as part of uh, a penitential rite. You'll also notice that the Eucharistic prayer is different, and those of you who are attuned to the Eucharistic prayer, you'll notice that quite quickly it moves to Jesus uh, and to the crucifixion and leaves out some of the other salvation history. And then the service music also is different. Uh, the service music written by a good friend of Ned's. Uh, the greatest difference on the first Sunday of Lent that you'll notice is that there's no opening hymn. And today is the day of the great litany. So for those of you who are here in the building, I would love it if you would turn in your order of service uh, to the great litany, which is uh, inserted in your order of service. Uh, the great litany is an extended procession that has uh, a great history uh, in the church. It was used in the fifth century, first in the fifth century, in the Roman rites of the day. And then when the Anglican church began to emerge out of the Catholic church uh, and the Book of Common Prayer, the first prayer book put together in English was done by Archbishop Thomas Cranmer. This is the first piece that he translated to go into the Book of Common Prayer. And Henry VIII was so pleased with it that he had uh, the churches uh, process around uh, doing the Great Litany when they were at war with Scotland back in the 1500s. This is an ancient, ancient prayer uh, that we bring and make ours today. So uh, we are grateful that you are here and let us stand and enter in to the Great Litany. O oh God, the Father, creator of heaven and earth, O oh God, the Son, redeemer of the world, O oh God, the Holy Ghost, sanctifier of the faithful, Blessed and glorious Trinity, one God. Remember not, Lord Christ, our offenses, nor the offenses of our forefathers, neither reward us according to our sins. Spare us, good Lord, spare thy people, who thou hast redeemed with thy most precious blood and by thy mercy preserve us forever. From all evil and wickedness, from sin, from the craft and assaults of the devil, and from everlasting damnation. From all blindness of heart, from pride, vainglory, and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, and malice, and from all want of charity. Lord, from all inordinate and sinful affections, and from all the deceits of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Lord, from all false doctrine, heresy, and schism, from hardness of heart and contempt of thy word and commandment. From lightning and tempest, from earthquake, fire and flood, from plague, pestilence and famine. From all oppression, conspiracy and rebellion, from violence, battle and murder, and from dying suddenly and unprepared. Lord, us. 
by the mystery of thy holy incarnation, by thy holy nativity and submission to the law, by thy baptism, fasting, and temptation, by thine agony and bloody sweat, by thy cross and passion, by thy precious death and burial, by thy glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Ghost, in all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment, we sinners do beseech thee to hear us, O Lord God, and that it may please thee to rule and govern thy holy church universal in the right way. it may please thee to illumine all bishops, priests, and deacons with true knowledge and understanding of thy word, and that both by their preaching and living they may set it forth and show it accordingly. That it may please thee to bless and keep all thy people. That it may please thee to send forth labors into thy harvest and to draw all mankind into thy kingdom. That it may please thee to give to all people increase of grace to hear and receive thy word and to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit. That it may please thee to bring into the way of truth all such as have erred and are deceived. That it may please thee to give us a heart to love and fear thee, and diligently to live after thy commandments. That it may please thee so to rule the hearts of thy servants, the President of the United States, and all others in authority, that they may do justice and love mercy and walk in the ways of truth. That it may please thee to make wars to cease in all the world and to give to all nations unity, peace, and concord, and to bestow freedom upon all peoples. That it may please thee to show thy pity upon all prisoners and captives, the homeless and the hungry, and all who are desolate and oppressed. That it may please thee to give and preserve to our use the bountiful fruits of the earth, so that in due time all may enjoy them. We beseech thee to hear us, Lord. That it may please thee to inspire us in our several callings, to do the work which thou givest us to do with singleness of heart as thy servants, and for the common good. That it may please thee to preserve all who are in danger by reason of their labor or their travel. That it may please thee to preserve and provide for all women in childbirth, young children and orphans, the widowed, and all whose homes are broken or torn by strife. That it may please thee to visit the lonely, to strengthen all who suffer in mind, body, and spirit, and to comfort with thy presence those who are failing and infirm. Amen. 
that it may please thee to support, help, and comfort all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation. That it may please thee to have mercy upon all mankind. That it may please thee to give us true repentance, to forgive us all our sins, negligences, and ignorances, and to endue us with the grace of thy Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to thy holy word. That it may please thee to forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts. That it may please thee to strengthen such as do stand, to comfort and help the weak hearted, to raise up those who fall, and finally to beat down Satan under our feet. That it may please thee to grant to all the faithful departed eternal life and peace. That it may please thee to grant that in the fellowship of Saint Mark and all the saints we may attain to thy heavenly kingdom. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, of God that takest away the sins of the world. O Christ, hear us. O Christ, hear us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weakness of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Christ also suffered from, for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who for, in former times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons were saved through water, and baptism, which this prefigure now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of the God, with angels, authorities, and powers made to subject him. The word of the Lord. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. To the glory of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Seated. Lent is litany season. <laughs> if you were here in time to hear Peter's welcome, you heard him say that in its original form, the great litany dates to 5th century Rome, and then Thomas Cramner crafted it into the first public worship rite written in English. You can also read about that in Ned's notes in the bulletin. And this morning, we confined our procession to the aisles of the church, but in the time of Henry VIII, Worshippers chanted the great litany while marching around public neighborhoods. I think most of us would feel pretty funny processing it around New Canaan. But in fact, this litany is a very public, very communal set of prayers. It addresses the collective problems of our lives. It asks for deliverance from evil, greed, and war. It prays for the earth, the world, the nation, or government, for prisoners, the poor, and all manner of suffering. To recall that these prayers date back to the fifth century just underscores the universal and timeless nature of our human condition. We have a constant need for repentance and amendment of life. If you were in church on Ash Wednesday, 
You also took part in the second great litany of our prayer book, the Ash Wednesday Litany of Penitence, which was written specifically for that prayer, our prayer book in 1979. That litany names our more individual sins of not loving our neighbors as ourselves, our, quote, self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people, our dishonesty in daily life and work, and our false judgments and our uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors, our prejudice, waste, our lack of concern for those who come after us. I appreciate both these litanies, long and sometimes tedious as they might feel in the moment. But if we can sit long enough with the things they actually guide us to pray for, they are convicting. <clears throat> if we take our time with them, we can experience some degree of spiritual awakening, though they will always land as fresh and as necessary when we say them again next year. Such is our human condition. We have a constant need for repentance and amendment of life. Just like an old monk said once to the question of what he does all day, I fall down, I get up. I fall down, I get up. That is the spiritual work of our lives, getting up every time we fall down, turning and returning, repenting and renewing our trust in the good news of forgiveness and the love and grace of God to guide us back from our misguided paths. We have a constant need for rep repentance and an amendment of life. Recently, I came across a speech by a young girl, aged 12 or 13, given to the United Nations Climate Conference, in which she calls out the grown-ups for doing all the things they teach kids in kindergarten not to do. You teach us how to behave in the world, she says. You teach us not to fight with others, to work things out, to respect others, to clean up our mess, not to hurt other creatures, to share, to not be greedy. Then why do you go out and do, do the things that you tell us not to do? She ends the speech by admonishing them. Please make your actions reflect your words. Most of you probably think I'm referring to Greta Thunberg and her speech in 2019 at the UN Clim Climate Conference in New York. <clears throat> but I'm not talking about Greta. I'm talking about Severin Suzuki from Canada, who gave her speech in 1992 at the Climate Conference in Brazil. At that time, the headlines called it the speech that silenced the world. It may have silenced the world, but unfortunately, the world has remained too silent. So little has changed since then. Children, including Greta Thunberg in 2019, are still asking why the grown-ups aren't taking action while the Earth and all its creatures choke on our carbon emissions. We have a constant need for repentance and amendment of life. The shooting at the Super Bowl parade in Kansas City this past Wednesday was nearly the 50th mass shooting in our country since the start of 2024. Our parishioner, Doug Worth, sent me an email from his brother, Chuck, who lives in Kansas City, which has one of the highest rates of homicide in the nation and is divided by all the categories that are familiar to us all, race, income, education, place of birth, religion, sexual orientation. And Chuck has spent his life in work that helps to heal broken communities in Kansas City. And in his email reflecting on the shooting, Chuck said, I heard one of our police chiefs frame it best. There was this caller who was going on and on that this event was not Kansas City. I replied, yes, it is. In so many ways, the same is true about our whole country. When something terrible happens, we fall into collective disbelief, as though we thought we were less violent than we actually are, and less divided than we really are. When we hear about a mass shooting in some other city, we do not spring into action to see that it doesn't happen again. The pain and grief stays local, and hardly anything collective happens to change things across the land. As we prayed earlier in the Great Litany, from all violence, battle, and murder, and from dying suddenly and unprepared, good Lord, 
deliver us. As we prayed in our Ash Wednesday litany, accept our repentance, Lord, for our blindness to human need and suffering and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. We have a constant need for repentance and amendment of life. At St. Mark's this year, the children's church school is observing Lent using a kindness tree. And the tree is set up outside Morrill Hall. You'll see it when you go to coffee hour today. Under the tree are baskets filled with suggestions for acts of kindness the kids can take home and do throughout the week. They say things such as, thank the custodians at your school for their hard work. Call a relative who is lonely and would be happy to hear from you. Clean up your room without being asked, and many more such ideas. We all agree that it's a good idea to teach our children to say please and thank you, to be kind, to protect one another from bullies, to be helpful, not to tell lies, and to be honest in all things. The frequent failure in our culture to uphold these basic values suggests that far too many of us grown-ups have strayed from these ways like lost sheep. We could all use a kindness tree to help bring us back to our basic and primary good natures. I catch myself in daily hypocrisies. I'm guilty, guilty of telling my child to speak kindly to others, and the next minute I'm raising my voice in a way that doesn't sound kind at all. We have a constant need for repentance and amendment of life. In today's Gospel of Mark, Jesus gives his first sermon, and it is ingeniously brief. I grieve that I am not more like Jesus. Jesus' sermon comes in four parts. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Part one, the time is fulfilled. This is the dawn of a new era. The time is now. Now is the new day, the prophets proclaimed. Part two, the kingdom of God has come near. It may not, like, may not seem like it to our tired eyes and our beleaguered hearts, but God's sovereignty and culture have already broken into the world. We know what God is like and how God loves the world by looking at Jesus. Jesus embodied God's culture of love, justice, and peace and promised that he would be with us always, even to the end of the ages, so that we could continue the work of embodying that culture too. God is so near to us, so available to us, and God's power of love and healing are within the grasp of every single one of us. The way to change our culture is to show kindness in the face of rudeness, patience in the face of frustration, considering others' interests before our own, strong, nonviolent resistance in the face of vicious violence, and countless other conscientious, countercultural ways of being. Part three of Jesus' sermon, repent. You heard it last week from Peter's sermon. The Greek word for repent is metanoia, or on Ash Wednesday, that's when he, he gave that sermon. Change your mind, turn and go in the other direction. The Christian life is a life of reorientation, turning to face spiritually east, east being the literal translation of the word orient. In the spiritual sense of east, we mean that place where the sun rises, the dawn of a new day, the place where God is, where light is, where all life awakens with the dawn. Part four of Jesus' sermon, believe in the good news. Trust that all of this is true. Trust that God is here within us, extending all the powers of life and healing and love for us to harness and deliver into the world. This is good news. And if this news doesn't bring us hope and joy, we haven't yet believed that it is true. We observe this season of Lent every year because we have a constant need for repentance and amendment of life. The good news is that change is possible. Change of heart and change of our ways is possible for every single one of us 
in whatever ways we each know in our hearts that we need to change. So we begin our Lenten journey with a litany of words. And as powerful as those words are, they are empty until they make their way into our hearts and out through our actions. They come into our hearts and out by our actions through one act of kindness, one effort towards justice, one impulse of generosity at a time. This is the path of Christ, the embodied way God provides for us to be able to face all the bad news of the world. The time is now. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Change is possible for each and every one of us. Amen. We believe in one God, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. And now may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning again. Uh, I'm standing, uh, and welcome. Welcome to those of you who are new, and welcome to those who are visiting. Uh, we extend our hand in love uh, out of a community of love, and we invite you to be with us. I'm standing here with Ned. Yesterday was uh, Ned's birthday, and not only was it Ned, can't stand close to me, see in the center of the screen here. Uh, uh, not only was it Ned's birthday, but I, 
yesterday was the fifth anniversary of Ned's first Sunday here. And I just wanted to have you come out, Ned, so that we could show a great appreciation to you. And for us all to recall that during Ned's tenure with us, about two and a half hour, two and a half years, not two and a half hours, two and a half years uh, was uh, really affected deeply by the pandemic in which Ned had to learn how to become a computer wizard uh, in order to produce all the music uh, that came to you uh, over the screens in your homes. But Ned, we are, we are really blessed to have a, such a maestro with us and we are grateful to you. So thank you for your five years. As Father Peter knows, I, this, this particular position came about in a marvelous string of, of circumstances, and I got very excited about the position, but I really didn't, I didn't know whether I'd get it or not. But then when he called me on the 4th of January, 1990, 19, um, in 2019, <laughs> um, and his, his message, and I still have it, his message was not really very encouraging. It was like a phone call that he didn't really want to make. So I didn't, I waited a couple of hours before I called. And then it was that when he offered me the job and I have been extremely um, fortunate and honored to be here with you all. Thank you. Thanks, Ned. Thank you. Uh, Ned made me listen to the message yesterday. Terrible. Oh, it's awful. Uh, just a few notes about our life together. As you know, uh, the world's greatest coffee hour follows. And uh, if you have a name tag, uh, please wear it. And if you don't, let us get you one so that we can, we can be brothers and sisters in our Lord. We can, we can gather together uh, as siblings in the spirit. But it's so great when we know somebody's name. Uh, also, uh, last week when you were on the way to coffee hour, uh, all of you gave over $1,000. Uh, to the Super Bowl of Caring, which is the monies that go right to our food bank to feed the people in our communities. Uh, a few notes about our life together. This week, the youth group will meet. Uh, that's at 6.30. There will be no Eucharist. 6.30 on Wednesday night. Uh, some of the other youth, as you know, are in Tizé, France. They got there today. Uh, they went to Barcelona over when they first arrived. There were some phenomenal pictures uh, of the youth in Barcelona. Sleepy but happy youth in Barcelona. Uh, and now back to this week. So uh, as you know, one of the great gifts that we have uh, is to take during the season of uh, penitence and repentance that was so beautifully laid out by Reverend Elizabeth to do something uh, for the life of the Spirit. We're invited into the life of the Spirit. And whether or not you listen to our podcast, uh, as, you know, as, you're, as yourself while you're doing the dishes, or whether or not you join a Revved Up for Sunday uh, a pod group, a Maranatha house church, a small group ministry at the church, it's all good. But I do want to especially invite you to a small group ministry where you might enter into a more holy communion with your friends as you share the gospel together. And those are Wednesdays uh, at 1245 in the library, Wednesday night, 730 in the youth room below Morrill Hall, Thursdays on Zoom, and then Saturdays in the library at 930. If you have any questions about any of that, please be in touch with the office. And just to put way out there, uh, in three or four weeks, we're going to have Christopher, Christopher Houlihan, who himself uh, studied with Ned and is a maestro of maestros, playing for us on Sunday, March 5th at 5 p.m. And then on St. Patrick's Day, the 17th, we're going to have a Celtic Mass and a newcomer welcome and a gathering at the rectory. And I did joke green wine on that day also. Uh, it is not true about the green wine, but everything else I've said is mostly true. Uh, also, Holy Communion follows. Uh, we're going to do standing stations today, two lines down here, one along the edge of the chapel. Now walk in love as Christ has loved us and given himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Yes, it is a right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as you are, yet did not sin. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. And therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night before he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant which is shed for many, for the forgiveness of their sins. And whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. And therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. And sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, for by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and power and the glory forever and ever. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us.
These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed upon them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Thank mm -hmm. you. make disciples who live a deeper life in Christ, a more holy communion with one another, and a greater love for the world. Thank you, God.